What if I told you there is a pharmaceutical compound that can increase lean body mass by nearly two kilograms in just 12 weeks, boost growth hormone levels and stimulate appetite in people who have lost their desire to eat? but it has been outright rejected by both the FDA and European regulators while being approved in Japan. Today, we are diving deep into anamorelin, and I need to be completely upfront with you. This is a pharmaceutical agent developed specifically for cancer cachexia, not a supplement or biohacking compound. More importantly, despite what you might read online, there is literally zero peer-reviewed research on this compound for cognitive enhancement, anti-aging, or testosterone optimization, Let's separate fact from fiction. Anamorelin is a selective ghrelin receptor agonist, meaning it is a pharmaceutical molecule that mimics the hunger hormone ghrelin. It was developed by Ono Pharmaceutical in Japan specifically to combat cancer cachexia, which is the severe muscle wasting and weight loss that affects up to 80% of advanced cancer patients. Here's what makes this compound unique. It is the first and only medication approved anywhere in the world specifically for cancer cachexia. In Japan, it was approved under the brand name Adlumis for cachexia in non-small cell lung cancer, gastric cancer, pancreatic cancer, and colorectal cancer. Now let's transition into the regulatory controversy. Despite showing consistent lean body mass improvements across multiple phase three trials involving nearly 1,000 patients, both the EMA and the US FDA rejected this drug. The EMA stated that the effects were marginal and that it failed to show functional benefits. Before we go further, I want to emphasize something crucial. This is a prescription pharmaceutical in Japan for terminal cancer patients. This is not something anyone should be sourcing through gray markets or using off-label. My goal today is purely educational to examine what the peer-reviewed literature actually demonstrates. Moving on to how this drug works, Anamorelin works like a hunger key in a lock and key system. Imagine ghrelin as the key your stomach sends to your brain and pituitary to say, feed me and grow. When ghrelin binds its receptor, GHSR1A, it tells your brain to eat more and the pituitary to release pulses of growth hormone. Anamorelin is a synthetic non-peptide molecule that fits this same receptor lock. In other words, it mimics ghrelin's effects it activates hypothalamic neurons, making you feel hungry, and it stimulates the pituitary to release more growth hormone, which in turn raises blood IGF-1, the downstream growth hormone mediator. Think of it like a car ignition switch. Ghrelin is the natural key that fires up the appetite and growth engine of the body. Anamorelin is a spare key that works just as well. Studies in healthy volunteers show that single doses cause robust growth hormone spikes and after a few days, sustained rises in IGF-1, this growth hormone and IGF-1 boost acts like turning up your body's growth and repair signals. Meanwhile, because ghrelin's brain effects are engaged, anamorelin can turn up the hunger thermostat. In fact, patients in trials reported a clear increase in appetite compared to placebo it also has a half-life of around 7 to 12 hours. Animal and cell studies also show it selectively targets these pathways without major off-target hormone effects. For example, a short-term study in volunteers found no significant changes in other pituitary hormones such as ACTH, TSH, or gonadotropins, suggesting anamorelin is specific for the growth hormone and appetite axis. Now let's transition to what happens when you actually give this drug to humans. The study by Garcia and Polvino enrolled 32 healthy volunteers and tested escalating doses of 25, 50, and 75 milligrams daily for five to six days. Growth hormone levels significantly increased at all doses with peak response at one hour post dose. The 50 milligram dose caused body weight increases of 1.08 kilograms and the 75 milligram dose caused 1.36 kilogram increases, changes in body weight directly correlated with IGF-1 changes. Next, let's move on to the study in older adults. A particularly interesting study examined effects beyond cancer cachexia. Dawson Hughes and colleagues performed a randomized controlled trial in adults over 50 with osteosarcopenia, which is the combination of bone loss and muscle loss. 
They gave 100 milligrams daily for an entire year. IGF-1 increased by 50% compared to placebo. The bone formation marker P1NP increased by 75%. Knee flexion torque at 240 degrees increased by 20%. However, lean body mass did not change and there was a non-significant effect on knee extension. Critically, the IGF-1 changes correlated with the bone formation changes. Now let's look at some animal synergy research. In a mouse model of cancer cachexia, anamorelin combined with a myostatin blocking peptide increased food intake, but did not show strong potential at increasing strength. In that study, mice treated with both a ghrelin agonist and a myostatin inhibitor had the highest grip strength and longest survival. However, there was no difference comparing the control and anamorelin groups in terms of strength. Anamorelin alone in animals has been shown to stimulate appetite. The combination study suggests it can help counter muscle wasting when paired with other agents. Now let's move on to the larger human trials. Garcia and colleagues published an integrated analysis pooling two phase two trials with 82 patients who had advanced cancer and at least 5% weight loss. They gave 50 milligrams daily for 12 weeks. Lean body mass measured by DEXA scan increased by 1.89 kilograms in the anamorelin group versus a loss of 0.2 kilograms in placebo. They also saw improvements in hand grip strength, body weight, and quality of life. IGF-1 and IGF-BP3 increased significantly. This established proof of concept, but phase two is small. The real test came in phase three, so let's transition to those key trials. The pivotal trials were called Romana-1 and Romana-2. These were large, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials conducted at 93 sites in 19 countries. Romana 1 enrolled 484 patients. Romana 2 enrolled 495 patients. All had inoperable stage 3 or stage 4 non-small cell lung cancer with cachexia. They used 100 milligram doses. The co-primary endpoints were lean body mass change and hand grip strength. Here are the findings. In Romana 1, Lean body mass increased by 0.99 kilograms versus a decrease of 0.47 kilograms on placebo hand grip strength, decreased by 1.10 kilograms versus 1.58 kilograms on placebo, which was not significant. In Romana 2, lean body mass increased by 0.65 kilograms versus a loss of 0.98 kilograms on placebo hand grip strength decreased by 1.49 kilograms versus 0.95 kilograms on placebo, which was not significant. Body weight increased significantly as early as week three. Anorexia cachexia symptoms improved significantly in both trials. Now let's transition to the controversy. The lean body mass effects were demonstrated and consistent across two large well-designed trials. But the hand grip strength, the measure of functional capacity, did not improve. Both groups got weaker, with placebo being slightly worse in some cases. Importantly, it is unclear whether participants performed exercise during these trials. Interestingly, one study by Yenna Rajalingam and colleagues gave Anamorellin Plus structured physical activity and nutritional counseling to cancer patients with fatigue. They saw significant improvements in fatigue, activity levels, anorexia scores and body composition. This suggests potential synergy with lifestyle interventions. Now let's transition into the meta-analysis research. A 2023 meta-analysis by Taniguchi and colleagues pooled seven randomized controlled trials with 1,944 patients. Data on appetite were available for 361 individuals in three randomized controlled trials. Patients receiving 100 milligrams of anamorelin showed significant improvement in appetite compared with control, whereas 50 milligrams did not produce a difference. The authors noted high heterogeneity between studies, and interestingly, this conflicts with anecdotal reports about appetite. Additionally, the Garcia, Friend, and Allen study found that administration of anamorelin significantly increased appetite over the window of taking it. Now, let's transition into reproductive claims. I need to be very direct because there is a lot of misinformation online about this compound. There are zero peer-reviewed studies examining anamorelin's effects on fertility, zero studies on libido, and zero studies on sexual function. We have exactly two studies that even measured testosterone, 
and neither was designed to study reproductive effects. The first is a small observational study in Japanese gastrointestinal cancer patients. They found that at three weeks, there was a transient negative correlation between IGF-1 changes and free testosterone changes. But here is the key finding free testosterone levels return to equilibrium with continued administration. There was no persistent testosterone suppression. The second is the Garcia and Polvino phase one study I mentioned earlier. They measured luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, the pituitary hormones that signal your gonads to produce testosterone and sperm. The result was no change whatsoever. This is reassuring from a safety standpoint because it means anamorelin does not suppress the reproductive axis like exogenous testosterone or selective androgen receptor modulators would. But it also means we have no evidence it enhances fertility or testosterone production. Now let's transition into liver safety. In early phase one research, one subject experienced moderate AST and ALT elevations that normalized upon discontinuation this suggested dose-related reversible liver enzyme changes at higher doses. However, the 12-month Dawson Hughes study monitored liver function tests at baseline two months, six months, and 12 months. There were no um, significant changes in AST or ALT over the full year. Both groups stayed within normal ranges. This suggests acute high-dose exposure might cause transient enzyme elevations, reinforcing the importance of routine blood work. A drug interaction note is that CYP3A4 inhibitors such as ketoconazole, etriconazole, or even grapefruit juice can increase anamorelin exposure three to four fold that could potentially increase side effects, particularly hyperglycemia. Anamorelin can also influence carbohydrate metabolism. Clinical trials have consistently reported mild to moderate increases in fasting blood glucose and occasional hyperglycemia particularly in patients with pre-existing glucose intolerance. In some large studies, e.g. Romana 1 and 2, elevations in glucose were among the more common metabolic adverse events, though they rarely led to treatment discontinuation. Because of these findings, the literature recommends monitoring blood glucose, especially in patients with diabetes or at risk for metabolic dysregulation during anamorelin usage. Now let's transition to anecdotal user reports. Interestingly, this was one of the only reviews of Anna Morellin on Reddit, and this user posted about it frequently. Overall, it is a relatively unheard of compound, even in bodybuilding circles. Here is what the user said. I have been taking Anna Morellin for 60 days now. I swear by it. I have not taken the MK version, but this stuff is great. I eat three to five times a day, eat three to four protein shakes, and I do not feel overly full or stuffed. I actually wake up hungry. My body is absorbing way more than normal amount of protein as it speeds up my metabolism. I can definitely notice my IGF-1 production as well. Only problem is my source ran out of product and I was paying $100 for a month's supply and it is now much harder to come by. Other than that, no side effects and amazing results in muscle gain. Now let's transition to clinical dosing information I want to be very clear, I am not providing dosing recommendations for off-label use because this is a prescription pharmaceutical approved only in Japan for cancer cachexia. For informational purposes, here is what the research used. The standard clinical dose is 100 milligrams taken orally once daily. Most studies were 12 weeks with safety demonstrated up to 24 weeks. The administration was an oral tablet taken on an empty stomach. Contraindications based on the literature include diabetes mellitus as a relative contraindication, concurrent use of strong CYP3A4 inhibitors without dose adjustment, and pre-existing hyperglycemia. Monitoring recommendations from trials included fasting glucose at baseline and at weeks 2, 4, 8, and 12, liver function tests at baseline and periodically, body composition measurements if available, and functional assessments. The Japanese label recommends starting at 100 milligrams once daily, taken at least one hour before or two hours after meals to maximize absorption. Now let's move into the final assessment. Anamorelin is a pharmacologically elegant selective ghrelin receptor agonist that demonstrates consistent and reproducible effects on lean body mass preservation 
and appetite stimulation in cancer cachexia, the mechanism selective growth hormone and I, GF1 axis activation without affecting other hormones is genuinely impressive from a drug design standpoint. However, the failure to improve strength and the modest body weight gains are legitimate limitations. For cognitive enhancement, anti-aging or longevity, there is literally zero evidence anyone making those claims is guessing at best and being irresponsible at worst. As always, consult with your doctor regarding any changes to your medication or lifestyle and do be aware that faking supplements and compounds is extremely common. If you are not going through a doctor, do drop a comment if you have used anamorillin and how you found it. That is all from me today, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe and I will be seeing you in the next video.